One of the very first videos on this channel was titled, Where Does the Money Go When You Buy a Stock? And in that video, I explain how when you buy shares of stock, you're buying them from whoever currently owns those shares. And that money that you're putting out to buy those shares doesn't actually go to the company. And this has caused some people to ask, how is buying stocks even investing at all if the money actually isn't going to the company? For example, this person here says it shouldn't even be called investing because no money goes in when you buy a stock. And another commenter says, so basically, buying stocks isn't really investing in the company itself, right? So I totally understand where they're coming from because it's natural to think that investing in a company should mean that you're putting money into that company's bank account for them to be able to continue to grow and expand. And if that's not what's going on when you buy your shares on the stock market, then what's the point of the stock market anyways? And how do companies actually benefit from it? So that's what I'm gonna explain in this one right now. And I'm super excited to share with you because it has the potential to be extremely enlightening for you. And depending on where you're currently at and your understanding of all the stock market, market and investing stuff, this could be a complete game changer for you. All right, so yes, it's true. If I open up my phone right now to buy some shares of a stock that I like, I would be buying them from whoever currently owns those shares and that money would not wind up in the bank account of the company that I just bought the shares of. The stock market is just a marketplace, a marketplace where owners of shares and those who wanna own shares can easily trade amongst each other. Now with that said, there are two main ways that the actual companies benefit from the stock market. The first one is more obvious and the second one is much less obvious, but once they're both properly understood, it can be a real game changer. So the first way a company benefits from the stock market is when they do their IPO. IPO is short for initial public offering. See, when companies need money, they really have two options of getting that money. Number one is they can issue debt, which is just another way of saying they can borrow the money. Or number two, they can do what's called raising equity capital, which is just another way of saying exchanging a percentage of the company's ownership for that money. If you've ever seen the TV show Shark Tank or the Canadian version of it, Dragon's Den, that's what's going on here. Entrepreneurs might come on the show and say something like, I'm asking for $1 million for 10% of my company. A company like Airbnb, for example, long before their IPO, raised multiple billions of dollars in a similar way to this over multiple private equity funding rounds over many years before eventually doing their initial public offering and going public. The initial public offering is basically just another funding round. When Airbnb IPO'd in November 2020, they created and sold 50 million new shares and raised approximately $3.7 billion from doing that. This is the money that did actually get added to the company's bank account to be used for growing and expanding the company. For you and I, even when companies IPO, buying shares on the IPO date, that first date that those shares begin publicly trading, doesn't mean that we're buying those shares directly from the company and that money is going directly to the company into their bank account. Instead, the way new IPOs work is that the company will hire an investment bank to underwrite the going public deal and it's that investment bank, or sometimes together with other investment banks, that buy all those new shares from the company and then in turn go and sell them to their largest net worth clients, pension fund clients, college endowment fund clients, etc., leading up to the IPO date. Okay, and this is how and why on Airbnb's IPO date, the opening share price was $146 per share in spite of the reported IPO price being around $68 per share. This increase in price from $68 to $146 wasn't technically to the benefit of the company. I'll explain why I said technically like that in just a second. Airbnb, the company, simply just collected that $3.7 billion, a transaction that happened between the company and the investment bank they used to underwrite the IPO. The increase in price from the reported $68 IPO price to the $146 opening price on the IPO date was to the benefit of the owners of the company, aka the shareholders, who would have seen the market values of their investment increase significantly that day. Tony Robbins has this little story about how he made $400 million in one day, and it was because a company he invested in pre-IPO went public that day, and the market value of his shares increased by $400 million in that one day. Something similar happened to a guy who did some artwork for Facebook back in 2005. He was originally gonna charge $60,000 for painting their building, but opted for taking $60,000 worth of shares instead for the job. Less than 10 years later, in 2012, Facebook went public and his shares were now worth $200 million. So here's the second way companies benefit from the stock market. The stock market gives companies the ability to easily issue new shares as a way of raising money, and this can happen at any point in a company's lifespan. So if at any point a company needs some cash and they don't wanna borrow the money, they can raise that cash by issuing more shares. The owners, aka the shareholders, would need to vote on it and approve it. And if approved by the shareholders, the company would announce their intention to offer additional shares. And then from there, investors, usually large institutional investors and investment banks, can submit applications to purchase some or all of the new shares. So for example, Tesla, the electric vehicle manufacturer, announced back in February 2020, through its filing with the SEC, that the company will be offering an additional 2.65 million shares at their current share price 
released at that time. And from this offering, they raised just over $2.3 billion. Companies can also issue new shares easily by selling the shares that were being held as treasury shares, which were previously repurchased from the open market. What happens when a company repurchases their own shares is that those shares become treasury shares and either can be canceled and retired, or they can be just held onto as treasury shares to potentially be sold again in the future on the open market. If a company is smart and strategic, they will only issue new shares in moments where they can get a great price. When Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, decided to issue those 2.65 million shares, he was recognizing that the market at that time was pricing Tesla shares above what they were worth and that it was a great opportunity to issue shares and raise some cash. Some companies and their CEOs are very strategic and smart when it comes to share issuing and share repurchasing. A great CEO will have a pretty solid understanding of what their company's shares are worth pretty much at all times. And they might take advantage of times when their shares are trading on the stock market at a price which is much higher than they think they're worth by using that opportunity to issue new shares and raise some cash. For example, if a CEO knew that the stock market was significantly overvaluing their company's shares and that the true value of the shares was closer to half of the value that they were currently trading for on the stock market, by issuing new shares at that time, whether it's through a public offering or through simply selling treasury shares that it had previously repurchased on the open market, they would essentially be exchanging 50 cents of value for every $1 of cash raised. That's the ideal scenario. And if you're a shareholder and the company you own is issuing shares to raise some cash, this is the scenario you would want it to be done under. As a shareholder, your ownership percentage of the company gets reduced when new shares are issued because the total number of shares outstanding has increased, yet you still own the same amount of shares. This is what's called share dilution. Having your ownership diluted is typically thought of as a bad thing. However, if it's done under a good scenario like we just described, where more cash is being received than there is value being exchanged for it, then it's not so bad. Imagine a company strategically issuing shares and being able to acquire a dollar of cash in exchange for every 50 cents of value, and then taking that cash and investing it elsewhere in an investment that had a present value of $1.20, for example. The company will have essentially turned 50 cents of value into $1.20 of value, and that's a scenario that you could live with as a shareholder, even if your ownership percentage decreased a bit in the process because the intrinsic value of what you own has ultimately increased. The opposite of this would be if a company issues shares as a way of raising cash at bad times when the stock market was actually undervaluing their shares. As a shareholder, this would be your worst nightmare because not only would your ownership percentage be getting diluted, but watching as the company you own exchanges more than a dollar of value for every $1 of value being received, would be hard to watch. Unfortunately, this behavior is not uncommon. If you wanna keep learning about this subject, you should check out this video right here I did on why companies buy back stock. And in there, you'll learn about how to actually identify the companies that have CEOs that get it and know what they're doing when it comes to share buybacks and share issuing. It's worth watching because avoiding investing in companies with CEOs that don't get it will dramatically improve your investing results in the long run. So here's what we've covered. Number one, most stock market activity takes place between shareholders and there isn't a direct benefit to the company from all this trading activity. Second, companies do benefit from the stock market, however, because the stock market provides a way for companies to raise cash and pretty easily by issuing new shares. Third, when a company goes public and does their initial public offering, they usually raise a bunch of cash. And number four, at any point in a company's lifespan, they can issue new shares and raise additional cash. Five, raising cash by issuing new shares means the company's total number of shares outstanding increases, which reduces the ownership percentage that each share represents, and this is called share dilution. Six, smart and strategic CEOs who are trying to maximize their stocks per share intrinsic value will wait until the stock market is overvaluing their shares higher than they're worth and issue new shares to raise cash when those opportunities arise. And likewise, will repurchase shares when the stock market is undervaluing them.